Dear Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honorable Stephen Harper, PCMP, on behalf of your neighbor to the south, we surrender. Since you set ablaze our White House in 1814, we have tried to resist you. We have mocked your accents, rejected your poutine, stolen your best actors, filmed Oscar winners in Vancouver and called it Seattle, and neglected to learn the geography of your provinces. She couldn't remember today. Or, couldn't remember today. Anyway. That ends today. Invade us. We now offer no resistance. Bring us our socialized health care, your mandatory two-week paid vacations, your high literacy rates, and clean streets. We begin adding extra U's to our words, pronounce honor, color, and armor as they are intended. We will adapt our tongues to against and the boat. We measure miles and kilometers, pounds and kilograms, and turn our thermostats down to minus 15 in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Ooh. Send your Monty south, we'll greet them with open arms. Our citizens will drive just below the speed limit and start smoking copious amounts of marijuana, but do so responsibly, as you so nobly taught us. <laughs> Dear Prime Minister Harper, welcome us as your brothers and sisters in the Commonwealth. Put in a good word with us with the Queen. We will rename the United Congress, the United States Congress, the Parliament of the United Provinces of Southern Canada. It was definitely due for an overhaul anyway and spend the next decade learning how that shit works. But let us keep Governor General Obama during the transition until Her Royal Highness appoints a new French speaker to the post. Uh. By first prefixing the, the, the pedestrian USS with the Royal, with the Regal Royal, the Royal American Navy will begin renaming warships and sail home merely to pr protect our shores. The Royal American Marines will inscribe toujours fidele beneath simple fidelis on all of their stationery. And re in revenge for Terrence and Philip, we will execute Trey Parker and Matt Stone to make amends, but since capital punishment <laughs> is banned in Canada, we'll sentence them to creating tourist videos for the CBC. <laughs> once your conquest is complete, once our schools have risen to your minimum standards, once bonjour and hello is as common as howdy and sup dog, then I ask one favor, one small request for the unconditional surrender of our bald eagle sovereignty to your maple leaf dom. With the border fluid and immigration law now a mute point, I'm searching for someone. There is a girl in your country. She is easy to overlook because she stays in the shadows, avoids the cameras on busy streets, that you can find her at festivals, dancing barefoot at the center of the world as those stars forge visas from heaven, slip past the early border guards to stand in the plazas, sleeve to their glow and human bodies around her and dance until the setting moon revoked their passports. Call them home and press their lips in the constellation. You will not know she is here until someone asks Slater if you saw the midnight sun swirling in the street in the afterglow of the stage lights. I admit I have never seen an aurora, but I imagine it feels like her laughter. And I know why polar bears and ice sheets stay north of the Arctic Circle, because that's as close as they can get to her. Do not stake out hotels, thinking that she'll slip in some night. She can sleep in ditches, on strangers' rooftops, on the bed of truck of pickup trucks, or in backyard trampolines. Anywhere she can find 10 square feet and quiet until the dawn. Instead, you can search for her on the wide open Trans-Canada Highway, somewhere between St. John's and Beacon Hill Park. I know it's 8,000 kilometers, so keep your eyes peeled. If you see her, it'll be by outstretched thumb first. And I know Canadian winters can be harsh, but you will identify her by her smile because it will keep you warm no matter the season. Now, her unpasteurized joy will take longer. First, she'll get comfortable in the seat and then ask for your history and wait for your story. Speak slow. Tell your story as best you can recall. She will ask many questions and she will cross-reference your answers. She will forgive a faulty memory as long as the words are spoken sincerely. And know that even if she's not listening to your every word, she's interpreting the sound of your voice, so be honest. Do not lie to her. She will see your fabrications before you can erect them. Swift kick them out from under you and leave you splayed on the floor before the lies can even leave your lips. She will play the role of stranger, then drop lines of prepackaged wisdom, play her pre shuffled hand of cards, but this is still her shell, her way to test your defenses, judge whether you're worth a second try. Here, I can offer you no advice. She still gauges me with every phone call. The game has no trick to win it. It's a measure of character and honor, something no one can give you and none can take away. If you don't have it, you can drop her off the next stop for gas and thanks for the lift. But if she sees it and she knows you're worth more than the ride, 
Then she will begin to unpeel herself like clothes of garlic. Each one is covered in its own thin armor. She lets drops of stories and shuffle their instruction. She has taken the hammer and nails of her ambition and re unrealized potential to build bridges for the rest of us to walk across. And somewhere between Havana, Cuba, and San Salvador, El Salvador, on the Black Rock City Playa of Nevada, over a bento box lunch in Sapporo, where Joe will hit you like a hidden tsunami you didn't see coming, sweep you away in the shelter, or sweep you away from shelter or shoreline, and as those waters fill your lungs, you wonder just how, how you were so oblivious for so long and how you could not have felt the energy she bottled. In her stories, she will teach you that borders are just lines drawn by men in office buildings who live a fluorescent fiction of a world still flat. Men who believe in maps and flags and anthems mean more than blood and handshakes and laughter. Men who've never dreamed beneath stars that she counts nightly. Men who've never seen the first kiss between sun and Grand Canyon. Men who've never heard peasants thank Dios for a vote that finally counts in a country that is finally theirs. In these life stories of her travels, you understand why she cast up worn shoes to walk barefoot in the dirts of Sedona and spin fire from her arms in the desert but leaves no footprints for those of us to follow. Just the earthquakes and scars and those of us who ate for her return the way zealots pray for messiahs and their late night confessions the day before martyrdom she is a first aid kit for boys like me who didn't know they were brokenhearted before they met her. She moves in like a chess piece on a board of checkers then she brings a howitzer to a knife fight. She lets loose a herd of buffalo in a china shop but will always offer to clean up afterwards. <laughs> I admit, her tomboy tongue blindsides on idle Tuesdays, as if the ancient six-day week leaped open just for her, added one more day and said, fuck the mathematics of calendars. <laughs> if she could sleep for days and cuddled in a boy's arms, she would surrender to the world. But the urge to burn a rage in a day pulls her back into the dreamlessness. There are too many stories for her to live, too many fingertips for her to touch. Tornadoes can't stay stationary either, despite the beautiful scene. If you can't find her on the road, you can search the boxcars. Just ask hobos. Hobos for a girl made of hula hoops, who's pull stumps and rhythm to railroad ties. Pick up all the hitchhikers you can find, and in route between points A and B, subtly ask them if some dark-haired, brown-eyed dancer with weathered hands and a black bandana has recently shared a meal with them, or offered to manufacture a tutu, or sew leg warmers from their leftover sleeves. Know that in summer, she melts into the woods to reforest will be clear. And Yukon men won't admit it, but they came a century too early, and they were not looking for gold. They came here to clear the roads for her, give the earth a wound for her to heal, to trade her surgeon hands. If all else fails, you can coax her out of the open by leaving out a plate of melted cheese and fresh garlic. I guarantee she is unable to resist. It may take years, so make it fresh every few hours, and she'll track you down with and if you find her, just give her a warm bed with no annoying alarm clocks. Keep her unchained and unlocked, left free to roam or return at her whim. She may pilgrimage to ashrams or overlooks, cathedrals cut into stone, awaken the third-eyed prophets and psychics who were too afraid to open them themselves. But she may still wander away in the day, call down the sun and the moon to dance in dusk, and beg Orion to share her arms and press her lips against new strangers. But if she leaves you, Mr. Prime Minister, do not chase her. She befriends guerrillas and revolutionaries who give her sanctuary like she was their own daughter, and she will fight, and they will fight to keep her unyielding. I will not fight you, fault you if she leaves. Just let me know when you last saw her. Point me in the general direction of her last inhabitants, because she's worth the pursuit. Whatever you may think of her, she is more. Dear Prime Minister, if you vow to search for her, if you promise to give it your all, you can have this country. Take whatever you want from it. Import our monuments like the Caesars did obelisks. Rename our parks after your heroes. Impose your laws and revoke ours. Redraw our states into a grid of the image of Pikachu. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Just demolish the borders that divide us and erase the lines that divide. Leave the office buildings. Share the blood and handshakes and laughter without the nomenclature of nations and dream beneath her stars. Feel the sun-kissed canyons and mountains. Give us the freedom of movement to find each other because whatever you may believe in, whatever you may love most about your country, whatever you may fight or die for, she is more.